Let us uh, begin with prayer today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of this pilgrimage in the Holy Land to journey in the steps of your Son, in the steps of Mary. And we ask you, Lord, to open our hearts to each site that we will visit to encounter you in this year of mercy as you desire us to encounter you. Help us to be open. Happy, happy birthday to you. Thank you, everybody. pray every mystery of the rosary where it happened on this pilgrimage and now we're praying the mystery of the transfiguration at the top of the mountain and for that reason i want you to remember that the christians then marked places but they did not they could not build churches you know that churches were allowed to be built in the holy land only at the time of the Emperor Constantine, mm -hmm. thanks to his mother, St. Helen, who we now call St. Helen, she is the one who converted to Christianity. She is the one who helped her son convert to Christianity. And only then he allowed Christianity to become the official religion of not what they call the Roman Empire, but the Byzantine Empire. Joshua, which is the same name as Jesus. Joshua is Hebrew, Jesus is Greek. Jesus, the savior of the people, brings them through the Jordan River across into the promised land, and eventually Jesus is gonna bring us around from the, into the promised land of heaven. So Jesus is going to lead a new exodus, like Moses led the old exodus, and the new exodus is leading us. We come out through water baptism, we have the Eucharist like we just had now, and, this, and eventually we're gonna be led right into the promised land of heaven. So this is all a picture of looking back at Moses and the old covenant and Jesus and the new covenant. Just a couple side points. You know, I never noticed this as an evangelical Protestant. I never noticed the fact that Jesus was talking to a dead guy. We always denied the, the uh, communion of the saints and we ridiculed you for praying to saints. And we'd say, where in the Bible does it say you should pray to dead saints? You know how you answer that question? Where does the Bible say saints are dead? Saints aren't dead, they're very much alive. They're in the presence of God. They're aware, like Moses, of what's going on. So I never realized that Moses was a dead guy buried 1,500 years before Jesus, and here he is talking to Jesus about current events and what's going on. 
once I became a Catholic, those are the kind of things that jumped out of the Bible at me that I had never seen before. And you remember, Moses was never allowed to come into the promised land. He had sinned against God and made God angry in, in, in the wilderness. And God says, you're not going to go into the promised land. But on the day of transfiguration, Moses finally got here, didn't he? He finally got into the promised land. One more event that took place here. We're in Cana of Galilee. So here's our group coming up to the church of the wedding. What a great group. Four priests, a deacon, three sisters, several seminarians and transitional deacons. We're on our way to the wedding church in Cana. Take all of our groups to the wedding church in Cana. It's a very beautiful church, and it's here that we renew our wedding vows. This is a place where Jesus turned water into wine, and here's the archbishop performing the ceremony. I renew and reaffirm. I renew and reaffirm. My wedding vows to you. My wedding vows to you. Once again, I promise. Once again, I promise. To love and honor you, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, for better or better or for worse, all the days of my life. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Here's our group coming up through the streets of Nazareth to the Church of Annunciation, where the angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you and you'll be with child. The altar here says, the word became flesh here, here. After the visit of Pope uh, Paul VI in 1964's visit, we decided to demolish the church that was here and build this one instead. 
This one was started to be built in 1965. This is the holy door here in Nazareth. In Israel, there are three holy doors for the year of mercy. This door right here in the Church of Annunciation in Nazareth, St. Catherine's in Bethlehem, which we'll go through. Also the holy door in the Church of Gethsemane, which we'll go through. This is our group coming in, the Holy Door, which was only opened a couple days ago for the Jubilee Year of Mercy. And our group gets to come in this Holy Door and all the graces going down to the place where Jesus uh, was, first became man, those first cells. When the angel announced it, on that altar it says the Word became flesh here. Bishop, I need to get a picture of you in the Holy Door. All right, one more, there we go. Bishop Aquila walking through the holy doors in Nazareth. Right now our group is praying the mystery, the first joyful mystery of the Annunciation, right at the place where it happened. Right at the cave where Mary lived 2,000 years ago when the angel approached her. The Incarnation did not take place in Bethlehem, it took place here where those cells were God and man. And here on the altar it says the Word became flesh here. Upper Church in Nazareth and it's full during the liturgies and mainly with young people. It's quite impressive. The largest basilica in the Middle East with a beautiful mural up front. And Mary wakes up first because she lets her guys sleep as long as they can because they work hard. So she doesn't wake them up until the last moment. What she does is she kicks up the embers in the fire and gets it going again and she makes a breakfast for them. Now what do you think the Holy Family, the first thing they did in the morning? Pray. Pray. That's what everybody says. But I'd ask you, is that the first thing you do in the morning when you wake up? I get up and go into the bathroom. I don't <laughs> and I'm saying this because we always think of them as so spiritual and holy, and yes, they were. But I also want you to think of the Holy Family as being very rustic in the way they really lived. I want you to meet the real Jesus who walked on the face of the earth. Steve and I got together. Uh, well, I've known Steve and Janet for many years. I hosted Kathy Answers Live, and Steve was probably on the show with me 30, 40 times yeah. during the years I hosted it. So we've known each other for a long time. Um, I came to the Holy Land with him and a group in 2011, and it was uh, it was February of 2013, I believe, that we said, "All right, let's give this a shot with Vocation Boom." I think 20 months out, and we got to. Uh, just a few months out, and uh, I think we had, to, what, 25 or 30 people booked, and right. Steve and I, and we said, well, let's just double, double our prayers, you know, and, and see what happens here. So, thanks be to God, we, we have a sold-out trip here, and we're very, very grateful for all of you coming with us. We got back a little early, so people had some free time. This is our hotel from looking at it from the sea, and here's a fishing boat going out on the water for the night fishing, and everybody had a great dinner and a good night's sleep ready for a busy day tomorrow.